Hello and welcome to the View from IMF video series. I'm Joy McKnight, Managing Editor of The Banker, and I'm joined via video link by Kristalina Gorgiva, who's Managing Director of the International Monetary Fund, to discuss some of the topics likely, likely to be discussed at the annual meetings. Kristalina, thanks so much for joining me. Thank you. So the developing markets have definitely been the hardest hit during the COVID-19 pandemic. You know, I guess, what more can the IMF and other multilateral institutions do to support these countries? Uh, we have been uh, uh, mobilized from the first day of this crisis to do exactly that, to offer a financial lifeline uh, to countries uh, that are uh, faced with uh, a crisis with limited fiscal capacity of their own. Uh, so far, we have injected $30 billion in emergency financing, a big chunk of it in sub-Saharan Africa, uh, where the needs are most, most dramatic. We also have provided, through normal programs of the fund, a substantial injection to help countries put the floor under their economies. Looking forward, we recognize that this crisis is hitting vulnerable economies the hardest, the same way the uh, coronavirus is hitting people with pre-existing conditions the hardest. And what we are concentrating on, and we will be working with the membership towards, are three objectives. Number one, help countries that cannot on their own muster the financial capacity by expanding our concessional financing capabilities. I am very grateful to our members. They have stepped up significantly. We have been able to triple our concessional lending capabilities. And we are now calling on the members again, and we will be discussing this during our annual meetings. Can you please shift some of your SDRs that you as advanced economy don't need for your financial stability towards a fund program, fund support for countries that would benefit from it. Can you help us have even more concessional capability to help the most vulnerable members? Two, we recognize that it is paramount for countries that stepped into the crisis with very severe pre-existing condition of high level of debt to be able to go through this crisis without collapsing under its burden. For this reason, together with the World Bank, we called for debt service suspension and the G20 embraced that we would like to see this debt service suspension initiative extended until the end of 2021. Why? Because I don't see on the horizon a massive uh, change in, uh, in uh, prospects for uh, low-income countries. Uh, many of them are highly dependent on sectors severely hit. Take, for example, tourism-dependent economies, Many of them are struggling uh, with the fact that remittances have shrunk and their domestic demand has collapsed. So let's try to give them a break for one more year and call on the private sector to also participate. We, uh, from our side, we have provided grant financing to our poorest members so they can be free from servicing their obligations to us, to the fund, to direct their money to what matters the most, uh, their, their own people. And three, work with, and by the way, on this issue of debt, we might need to have some debt restructuring for countries where the uh, debt service suspension is just simply not, not enough. And three, work tirelessly with countries to use this crisis to improve their policy capacity, their institutions, uh, the transparency of their governments, their ability to increase domestically uh, their uh, resource uh, uh, 
uh, mobilization. What we want is, as we talk about universal access to vaccines, which actually matters tremendously if we are to help uh, uh, low-income countries, I want us to think of universal access to the internet at the same time. Because if we can get governments to be all visible in what they do to their people, then we put in the hands of citizens the controls uh, for the use of these funds. Thank you so much. I guess my next question is really how can um, the world economy really transform to be uh, much more inclusive? Well, this is a very, this is a very important question to ask. Uh, uh, even before the coronavirus uh, uh, crisis, we were living in a world where inequality has been uh, increasing almost everywhere. And uh, the uh, um, crisis risks this to accelerate. We have seen it in the past. IMF research shows that after a pandemic, there is increase in inequality. Uh, people with low education severely hit unemployment among these groups deepening. And we don't want this to be the case yet again. We also uh, have to recognize that uh, there is one particular aspect of this crisis that is really dangerous, and it is loss of educational attainment. For kids that do not have access to the internet, this school year is, is gone. When kids drop out of school, very often they don't return, and it is primarily valid for girls. Uh, what we see now in many developing countries is massive increase in early uh, marriage because of this uh, disappearance of schooling as a way to keep uh, boys and girls uh, um, uh, learning and, and, and building their skills for the future. So. What do we need to do about inequality? Well, first, we need to recognize that in this crisis, there are parts of the economy that are doing much better. Think of digital transformation, think of the tech industries, those of us who can work from home. And the question is how we can have a way in which the benefits that are generated by this crisis are shared. Also, governments are pouring a lot of support for businesses. How could these businesses, as they do better, pay back to society, help us to uh, have the resources to prevent inequality from growing? But above all, it is this question of inequality of opportunity. How can we be much more mindful about the needs to invest in the most precious resource we have, us, people, in our education, in our health, in social protection. And how can we modernize the social protection system from one that prevents you from falling to one that also offers you a way to climb up? In other words, combine social safety nets with what I would call social safety ropes. Policymakers have their work cut off for them. And for us in the fund, what it means is to help accelerate learning from, from each other and also put a big screen on which people can see the danger of a society that is becoming less equal. Let's remember 2019, was a year of protests. People were on the street from Paris to Chile. If we don't want a society that is teared apart because of inequality, we ought to address this today, today when we still can. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for your insights, Kristalina.